I'm delighted to introduce our speaker today, uh, Thomas Mukunde. Thomas is the Library Services Advisor with the Lubuto Li Library Partners. Uh, Thomas uh, is uh, a native of Zambia where the Lubuto Libraries are located, uh, but a little bit of, of irony, he found out about uh, Lubuto Partners uh, while he was in the United States at Georgetown doing his undergraduate work uh, because uh, the Lubuto headquarters is in the D.C. area. Anyway, after he found out about the project and got to know some of the people there, after he finished his degree at Georgetown, he ended up back in Zambia and in November 2013 joined the Zambia office of the Lubuto Library Partners as the Library Services Advisor. He's actually now back in the U.S. Uh, pursuing uh, his MLIS degree at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, and is currently visiting the West Coast, and we're delighted to have an opportunity to have him speak to us today about what's going on uh, with the Lubuto Library Partners and uh, let me turn things over now to Thomas. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Bill, for that introduction, uh, Dr. Fisher, for that introduction. Um, and good afternoon or good evening to everyone, depending on where you are. Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, my experiences uh, with Lubuto Library Partners um, through the lens of um, a Zambian native, uh, but also through the lens of um, uh, my uh, library studies. I'm 25% uh, through, um, just finished my first semester at, um, at Gisless in Illinois. And uh, just to give you a brief outline of my talk, um, this presentation, uh, firstly, I'm going to talk about um, how I, uh, uh, Dr. Fisher has already um, introduced how I found Lavuta, or how Lavuta found me, which is probably the best thing, one of the best things that has happened in my life. <laughs> um, and. Uh, but I'll talk about my experiences working with Lubuto on the ground in, in, in Zambia. Um, prior to that, I had done a little bit of volunteering uh, with them in D.C. Um, but I'll talk about my experiences in Zambia actually being a full-time worker. Um, and then I will talk about um, the context of the services that Lubuta Library Partners uh, provides in Zambia, the children's libraries we are uh, setting up in a society where such services scarcely exist. So I'll talk about the services from my own experiences uh, there. And then I will proceed to talk about um, recent developments in uh, Lubuto including the opening of our um, third library, Mumuni Library, and then uh, new information about a future fourth library that um, we'll, uh, we are beginning to work on. And finally, I will talk about some opportunities uh, for youth services librarianship that I see um, in Zambia, particularly after uh, getting some exposure to uh, LIS education and visiting libraries here in the Bay Area um, with Dr. Bernier. Uh, but before I start, I'd like to uh, say a few quick thank yous. Um, firstly, I, I'd like to thank you, Dr. Anthony Bernier and his family for uh, being very gracious hosts to me here on the West Coast. Uh, I'd also like to thank um, the Graduate School of Library and Information Science at Illinois for um, helping me fund this trip. And last but not the least, um, I'd like to thank Lubuto Library Partners for the great support they're giving me in uh, my education in my 
LIS uh, degree. Okay, so I'll give everyone a background on um, on Lubuto, uh who we are, a quick background on who we are and where we operate. So uh, Lubuto libraries, as I've already mentioned, are children's libraries. Our uh, reason for existing is that we're there in Zambia to serve uh, children and the youth. Um, there are currently three libraries in existence. Um, two near Lusaka, uh, so on the map on the left, that's a map of Zambia. And uh, there's a star near Lusaka, the capital city. So two of our libraries are uh, in um, in two two parts of Lusaka city, and these libraries um, uh, are located in areas um, uh, near areas where um, a high number of uh, children in vulnerable situations live. So the process of deciding where to locate these libraries was very carefully thought through. Um, and our third library, most recently opened, is towards, towards the south, towards Livingston. It, it's in a, in a village called uh, Nabukuyu, uh, and it's called Mumuni Library. And we'll talk about that later on in, in, in this in this discussion, uh, but it, it is a rural library, uh, which the dynamics will be uh, quite different, and we're already beginning to see how that library um, will be different. Okay, so um, Zambia is in the right in the middle of Africa. I, I just want to comment on that map on the right. Okay, so what were my experiences with uh, the Wuta Library partners in Zambia when I was there? Um, there are two main things that I, I saw, two, two main uh, uh, overarching uh, ideas of what I felt we were doing there. And the first one um, was we were empowering children through the day-to-day -day operations um, we're empowering children through an open system of education um, giving them a chance to explore to to learn beyond um, the confines of a classroom and I must uh, stress here that many of the youth we serve actually do not have a chance to go to school so this is this is this is an opportunity for them, their minds to be to be inspired for the for the for some form of education, really high quality and open system of education. And secondly, uh, the second broader idea of what I felt we were doing on a day-to-day -day basis was promoting children's rights. Um, these. Uh, apart from promoting their right to an education uh, through providing high high quality services, um, we were also promoting other rights such as their right to health, their right to uh, freedom of expression. Um, there are a number of anecdotes that um, I, I have from, from my time in Zambia, such as um, uh, a young girl who came to, to the library after um, being physically abused by her her parents, and she felt the library was a safe space to talk to to talk to our staff and the staff intervened uh, we made sure that she got uh, support from the appropriate services um, and this girl is is happy now so her right uh, you could say her right to health and life was was uh, was preserved in our libraries. So the uh, Lubuta libraries, as I'll talk about in the presentation, um, we we serve we are libraries, but we serve as a as a third space, a space where children can feel safe and comfortable, and um, and that that leads me to the services that that we provide at Lubuta in Zambia. 
And as you can see there in the picture, we have uh, four young children with a member of staff reading. And I, I feel that the Wuta libraries, the, the, the buildings, um, a lot could be said about the buildings. It could be a whole other talk on its own. We uh, follow uh, vernacular conventions of, of architecture, which make welcome the, ch will, the architecture welcomes the children to this place. Uh, it, it's not this sterile environment. It, it's this warm, inviting environment. And uh, through my observations of, of children and how they used our two Lusaka libraries, I found that um, they came to the library to read, to use the computers, but a big reason they came to the library was this was a space they felt safe in. They, this was a space they came to hang out with friends, to, to, to uh, talk to caring adults, um, people who would listen to them, people who would answer their questions. And uh, this, this is a really big thing, um, uh, especially in our times when people are questioning the value of a physical library space. Uh, and we've, we've seen that our, the space is actually a big factor in the library. It's, it's actually part of our services, the, the, the actual space. And secondly, one of uh, the second service that we provided uh, was a, a good collection. Um, excellent collections, and that included materials in local languages. Um, children came to the libraries to read for pleasure, for fun. Uh, to do free voluntary reading or to supplement the school learning for those who who go to school. Um, one of the things Lubuto is doing is uh, promoting the idea of collection development, a high quality balanced collection for children and that provides both a, a window and a mirror to their own lives. Um, and we have heard in some circles in Zambia the idea that uh, reading culture does not exist, quote unquote reading culture does not exist in Zambia. But when you come to these libraries, these are the most vulnerable children in, in a society that is re relatively poor. And you see dozens of children at any hour of the day are reading, enjoying stories, um, and that just that just disproves that notion that there's no reading culture. Uh, perhaps what people are trying to say is that in places where there are no books, there might be no book culture, but we know from reading research that people are always reading. People read signs, people read uh, labels on food, and once you put beautiful books in front of children, whether they're African or American or Asian, they will read. And uh, the Lubuto collections, which are carefully selected, are are doing a lot to Im Im increase chances for children to read. Uh, an important thing I should talk about is um, our collections are, we have a starting day collection of um, about 4,000 books um, uh, ranging from fiction um, at different levels uh, to nonfiction and reference works, reference works. Um, but we also purchase uh, local materials uh, uh, written in the local languages or written about Zambia. So children are able to read in a language they speak at home or are able to read about their own environments. And 
these books are hugely popular. Um, which and books, picture books. You know, later we'll see a picture of of, of our uh, one of our staff uh, members um, reading. This is not my hat. Uh, that that's an American picture book, but it, it's it's excellent such that it has cross cultural value, and really children respond very well to that. So both books um, written in the country, um, but also excellent books that. Uh, children can respond to uh, in spite of their origin. Another service that uh, I experienced and that we we provide in Zambia are the variety of programs, the programming uh, ranging from early childhood programming uh, to teen programming. And programming, I think, has the function of variety of functions, but with Lubuto we see that um, programming uh, draws children to the library. Um, it also gives them an opportunity to explore uh, talents um, uh, that that they never knew they had uh, to to uh, be expressive to. Uh, digging into that inner life that they scarcely get a chance to to express in 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 their communities, and thank you, Sandy, for your compliment on the photos. Um, and we we see that uh, in Lubuto we have the model of a, of an integrated system of programming, where a book could inspire um, a play. Uh, you see uh, various pictures of plays, uh, drama performances, and the same book could inspire uh, artwork. So the children in the bottom picture in the middle are actually painting a, a wall at one at a local um, local business, um, and they 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 got the inspiration for those for those birds from books from our collection actually. Uh, working with local artists, uh, so local artists volunteer their time to teach um, our children the skills, Lubuto um, patrons the skills. Um, the same book uh, could be a source for a story for a mentoring session. Um, and many times after drama performances, that are a lot of fun. I I, I saw children. We we. We made it a point if a drama performance, uh, the story was uh, taken from a book. Sometimes stories are taken from from uh, local stories, uh, the oral tradition. But we always made it a point when a story was taken, and still do, uh, that the, when stories were taken from a, a book from the collection, we showed the book after the, the performance. And I, I invariably saw a number of children um, running into the reading room after the performance and asking the librarians, oh, where is that book? I really want to read it. So this is also book promotion in, in another way, reading promotion by the young people themselves. I'll just go into uh, the different programs in a little more depth. Um, that's uh, Casella, uh, reading to an eager audience. Um, uh, he Kassela is one of our staff and who has been trained in uh, how to uh, perform story time. Um, so story time is one of our staple programs. It, it's held uh, every day, three times a day. Every day the library is open. Uh, lots of kids, uh, children come in to to listen to the stories. Their traditional stories are also told. And this really this helps children develop their early literacy skills, um, uh, so that when those who can go to school eventually go to school, they they have they have a solid background, a solid footing. Um, and in most of the patrons who come, almost all the patrons, the children who come to the Wuto libraries, do not have books at home. They don't have 
another chance for for to hear stories. So th this is an excellent opportunity. Um, and one thing that I noted when when I was in our libraries, our collections, our children's book book collections are some of the best in in Zambia. Close probably the best. Um, the only other places in Zambia that have similar quality collections are the international schools for the very elite. So these are these are children who are poor children and have access to the best children's books. And that's always that that just blew my mind when, when I became associated with with Lubuto in my junior year of college, just how much care is given to collection development. Lubuto mentoring, that's uh, a recent photo of Kenny. Uh, Kenny Howe is his uh, one of our trained mentors. Um, the mentoring program was uh, developed by a Zambian professional, a professional um, motivation and mentoring expert, and the program is uh, targeted towards teenagers and has um, about twelve sessions, which aim to inculcate Zambian values, values of uh, perseverance, um, care for the community, integrity. And we use both um, modern stories in print, but also oral, the oral tradition. Um, and you see in the picture that um, everyone is at the same level, seated in the talking circle. And this is a traditional Zambian way of, of, of Talk, uh, talking about things, um, uh, debating, coming up with solutions to problems, um, passing values from one generation to the next. And uh, the man who developed the mentoring program, uh, Dr. Mukuka, uh, has vast experience in, in uh, developing these sorts of programs. Uh, he has taken it to the next level of bringing in stories that um, we have had in, in, in our traditions, but also uh, bringing them in conversation with more um, uh, global stories and giving children a chance to, to, to gain these values, to get connected to their culture and society. Um, uh, many of our, of our children are, are, have experienced loss in their lives from HIV AIDS, um, yeah, the many orphans we serve. And this is a place where they can feel they're a part of something. In the Wuto, we, we say one of our main goals is to reconnect children in a variety of ways, but we're reconnecting children who have been uh, societally isolated back to their culture. And I, I think the, the mentoring program is just amazing. So many things, I, I was, uh, I, I sat in on these uh, programs many times and so many things come out, uh, out of these discussions. Um, children are just open to talk in, in ways that they're not they can't talk in any other place in Zambia in in their in their lives. I I mean, and and this this is just um, awesome if I can use that term, that millennial term. Um, the drama program, as I've already stated, was developed um, with a local organization called Barefeet. We have. And uh, it's very participatory. Children choose their own story. They uh, develop their roles through collaboration. Uh, we, the stories come from both the oral tradition and books. And uh, this, this program, children who participate in the drama program uh, have told me that they gain uh, a certain self-confidence. Um, they, they they really enjoy participating, but this this is a way for them to express themselves, to uh, organize their inner lives, and 
it also it's also book promotion as I've, I've already stated. We take stories from books. Um, the children perform for their peers. Huge crowds show up. The neighbors, uh, people from across in the community, parents come to performances, and children are inspired to to read the story where the where, where the to read the book where the story was taken from afterwards. Um, a really important service that Lubuto provides, and um, that is pretty unique to us, I think, is our outreach program. Uh, in the picture, you see Vesa uh, in the green shirt reading aloud to children, and on uh, on the left is Ndala with the OLPC computer. Uh, so this is actually somewhere out in the community on the streets um, at a market where um, the Wuta staff go out and meet children where they're at. Um, they uh, take them stories, um, show them computers and the different things you can do on the computer. And these are children who are hanging out in the middle of the day with uh, really not much to um, to to do and their mind with not much to stimulate their minds their their, their, their imagination and the mentoring the outreach program is is really really important to us because our goal is to reach out to the most marginalized children in, in our society, in Zambian society. And sometimes you you would just go and talk to talk to a child, talk to the teenager. Most of these and these all of the, the children in here are pretty young, but um sometimes our other Kenny Howe who has come out of this experience of living in the streets. Um, sometimes he'll just go and talk to them and tell them about uh, a place where you can learn, where you can develop yourself. And it may not work the first time, but after building that rapport the second or third time, many times children actually after hearing about Lubuta the first time, um, you see them the next day because they just are fascinated by the sort of books you read to them. But uh, sometimes for the older teens living on the streets or in the center of town in a pretty rough situation, um, you, you need to build that trust, and we have people on the staff from the ground up who who know the situation uh, these uh, young people live in and know how to talk to them. So there are skills that um, the Wuto is training uh, staff in, uh, such as skills in uh, evaluating children's books, etc., but also skills that um, are there, the funds of knowledge that people have, the knowledge about the society, knowledge about um, uh, street children and how, what, what led them to that experience and how best to talk to them. Um, so outreach is, is really important for, for our mission. Okay, um, so before I proceed, um, I will pause there for questions, and um, there are a couple of ways you could ask questions. You could chat um, in the chat box or click your talk button and um, ask a question. So any questions uh, that have arisen from what I've said so far? Thank you. Okay, Anthony has a question. I would I'd like you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, to talk about the relationship of Lubutu within the uh, library context of Zambia generally relative to other kinds of libraries, if you would. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, Dr. Bernier asked um, um, about the Lubutu's operations uh, relative to the library context in Zambia. Uh, so uh, Lubutu Library Partners, um, we are innovative in the sense that we we are a ground up organization we from inception uh, um, 
Jane Mayer, the founder, and others have made it a point to work hand-in-hand uh, hand with uh, the profession in Zambia, with librarians working in Zambia. Um, the Vuta Library Partners has a memorandum of understanding with um, the Zambian Ministry of Education, um, Science, Vocational Training, and Early Education. I know it's a mouthful. Uh, to be the experts on children's services, children's library services in Zambia. So we, we are working very closely with the profession. An additional point is that although uh, some public libraries exist in Zambia, very few, there are no services targeted towards youth. Uh, the concept of a, a children's librarian or young adult librarian is, is, is really new with Luwuto in the country. So we feel those are a couple of innovations, working ground up, uh, not just imposing imposing a certain view of library services, uh, but working ground up in our various uh, locations, uh, but also introducing um, youth um, librarianship in, in, in Zambia. Thanks for that question. Um, are there any other questions? Or yes, I, Thomas, I have a question, actually. Uh, going back to your okay. comment about the architecture of the, of the libraries. Yes. Um, we have a, a tradition in, in this country of something called Carnegie Libraries that dates back to the beginning of the 20th century when Andrew Carnegie gave a lot of money to local communities to build, um, in many instances, the first public library in those communities. And in addition to the money, Carnegie uh, gave a lot of those libraries a set of building plans. So you could walk into almost any Carnegie library in the country, and that library would look the same. It would be very familiar to you. So now with three libraries in Zambia, are they all is the architecture the same, or are each of those libraries a little different based on the actual physical location of where each of those might be? I guess. Um, thank you for that question, Dr. Fisher. Um, so our libraries, um, our architect, um, Eleni Karamzi, um, uses uh, uh, vernacular methods of, of, of designing these buildings, um, they have a similar, uh, similar plans, but they do respond to, to the local environment. There are aspects of the libraries that are very localized. One of the, uh, yeah, okay, Jane just, okay, one of, one of the things that we, we have we have done is each each of our libraries before 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 we build it we do a community consultation and for the the third library it's actually the first of our three libraries with a youth youth center a young adult room and um, I, I was just um, uh, Dr. Bernier and I were visiting some libraries in the day uh, this past week and we visited some amazing uh, young adult centers and um, it's it's really interesting that um, as far away as, as Zambia we are um, we now we now have this this a, a youth young adult room we we have a young adult room a new innovation that Dr. Bernier was part of of introducing and also um, our libraries have decorations and the the Mumuni Library that I will talk about shortly also has local decorations from the local culture. So whereas the, the, the overall plans are similar, we make it a point to respond to the demands of the community. In the case of Mumuni, they asked for, um, for they asked for a youth room because they felt youth needed their own space, and we were inspired uh, by uh, Dr. Bernier's work to to actually respond to that request. Uh, but also, the the designs on the walls are inspired by um, by local local um, artwork. Um, 
Dr. Fisher, thanks for that question. Uh, is that is that does that respond? To yes, to that? uh, that's a, that's a great uh, response, okay. and I'm glad that you are in fact taking uh, taking heed of some of the local differences in, in the localities. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, uh, so I will continue with um, the second part of the presentation, and so. The recent developments in, in the Luta Library Partners. Um, so the first one I'll talk about is the, Mumu, the opening of Mumuni Library. And this also uh, speaks to what you have, we, we have just talked about, Dr. Fisher. The name of the library itself, Mumuni is the Tonga word for Lubuto. And just stepping back slightly, um, Lubuto is a word in the Bemba language, which is spoken in the north of Zambia. Uh, that means light, enlightenment, uh, learning. And uh, we, we, when we went to the south of Zambia, um, where the new library is located, um, and where the Tonga culture, the Tonga-speaking people live, uh, they requested that their library be called Mumuni Library, uh, their own word for light. So we felt that that's something that they wanted, that something that um, showed that they were taking ownership for the library. And this, 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 the library there is called Mumuni Library. And in the picture, you see um, young people uh, at the opening uh, doing a Tonga dance. So from the inception, uh, Mumuni Library uh, in this rural area as opposed to the two first Lubuta libraries in the urban area. Um, and the, the opening was a deeply Tonga affair. Um, uh, Jane just reminded me that all the ceremonies took place in Chitonga. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend this because I was deep in my studies. <laughs> but all the, all the ceremonies were in Chitonga. English speeches were translated. So from the inception, um, the, the opening, the, the library has a different flavor. Um, it is in a place called Nabukuyu Village, uh, several uh, miles outside of, of Monze, the nearest town. Um, the community were involved in the building from the inception, uh, including um, a library committee was set up um, to, to plan the building. Um, the community donated uh, materials such as the beautiful elephant grass on the roof um, and some effort. Um, and one thing that people there are really grateful for is that the collection contains books in Shitonga. Um, during, um, during my uh, literature review for, for one of my classes um, last semester, I found, I found some, some research uh, done by students at the, a student at the University of Zambia who, um, who found that um, in many places in southern province, children are expected to learn um, a Tonga um, in addition to learning English. And they had no books in either language in, 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 in these schools. And I think Mumuni Library would totally change this community. It is the only culture institution for miles and miles. And we're expecting a, a great, um, just, just the, the community to, to be really, really empowered and, and changed by the community. Um, Staff training, um, the, the staff there, we started t training the staff at Mumuni Library months before the library was opened through exchange visits to Lusaka with our staff there. And um, over the coming months and years, really, uh, Lubuto staff will continue to train, to train the, the Mumuni staff, the Mumuni Library staff. Um, and as I said, um, this is, uh, Mumuni Library is the only culture institution for miles and miles. And 
people were very grateful. Um, and I feel we just need more of, of these libraries across Zambia uh, because learning and enlightenment and sharing ideas and having a place to to meet up a, a community space is, is just is just amazing. It's just one of the things we need in this society. And following on from that, um, uh, the Bhutto is now in the process of making plans to open, um, to, to build our fourth library, uh, which will be located at the center called Mutunzi uh, near Lusaka. Uh, the fourth library um, was born um, uh, the financials, um, a, a lady called Judy Feedham um, donated $100,000 towards this library and Luwuto was working to find m matching funds to help complete the library, buy a collection and recently we just learned and we're very excited about this that uh, American schools and hospitals abroad or ASHA which is a branch of the United States Agency for United States United States Agency, sorry, for International Development, or USAID, has uh, granted Lubuto uh, uh, $250,000 to make this fourth library possible. So this these funds, Judy Feedhams, but plus the the grant from ASHA, will uh, make possible. Um, a complete library building and a collection. Um, I was talking to Dr. Bernier the other day how this will also enable us to think about building a core collection um, of books that the Wuta Lab future the Wuta libraries, but also other people in in the region in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, serving young people. Um, a core collection that can be used. So we're working with Mrs. Nelson's Library Services to develop this core collection, um, a company which will will buy all the books at once. Of course, we'll continue collection development in in the local in the local languages, depending on the location. But this will extend our work further in in promoting. Um, a high quality collection for children in Zambia but beyond Zambia as well. Uh, this is really exciting uh, because um, it, it just gives us a chance to reach more children with, with the Wuta libraries. Um, ASHA really, their goal is to um, promote, promote um, American values around the world and this is interesting for me because I, I've, I've had some experience in America, but I, I grew up in Zambia and, and um, we've, I've talked to this with, with Jane, uh, about this with Jane, um, what sort of American values our libraries are promoting. And I think libraries in general uh, here, I've seen this sort of democratic ethos that promoted by libraries. I've, I already talked about the children's right to freedom of expression, which we have seen very tangibly in the Wuta libraries. Um, the promotion of peace and understanding between different groups of people. In the case of Zambia, different ethnicities. So these issues that libraries promote here in, in the United States are, are also issues that exist in, in Zambia, in different parts of Zambia, but they may look different. Uh, where here uh, you have more of promotion of, of understanding between, say, uh, races or different um, ethnicities or religions. Um, in Zambia, the, the issues are slightly different, but they are there. There, um, there. Are, we need to think about um, uh, how diff the different ethnic groups in Zambia can get along. How how people can gain democratic ethos. Um, and Zambia is a, a young democracy, but the Wuta 
Levuta definitely is 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 helping inculcate those those uh, democracies. Um, uh, thank you, Kate, for that 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 observation. Uh, that um, that uh, com uh, that comment that we have a lot of uh, library development in the U.S. Um, so uh, that's Mutunzi, um, the future, the fourth library, and lots of work will go into making that possible over the next several months. Um, I know I'm running short of time, but uh, since I talked about recent happenings, um, if anyone has any quick questions before I go to the last part of the talk, um, it would be highly appreciated. Okay, it doesn't seem there are questions, so I'll proceed to the last part of the talk. Um, when Dr. Bernia and I were talking about um, my talk here, I think we felt that it was really important for me to reflect on libraries in Zambia and through the lens of, of my studies at the University of Illinois and what I began to see as some of the ways that um, the profession of library and information science, what, what are some of the way, things that we can offer to Zambia as it, from a professional standpoint. Um, and let, let me just uh, say that so far I've had uh, a really amazing time um, at Illinois uh, in the school there, in the School of Library Science. Uh, it's just um, I have excellent professors who are inspiring me to think about things in a different, um, in a in a different and very professional way. Um, they're very supportive of my uh, work with Lubuto and Lubuto as a model, and that's very appreciated. There are just three quick, um, quick opportunities I see, and there there are many more that I will gain more understanding as time goes on. But I think the first. Um, is collection development to counter the effects of uh, what we call book dumping in in Africa. And book dumping is a situation where um, you have old books in your in your collect in your garage and put them in a box and ship them off to Africa. Uh, or books from a collection that have been weeded. And this is a very common thing that happens in, in that, that we see, and pub, all publishers want to dump books that they can't sell, yeah. So we see this happening a lot. We, I've seen this. I grew up through this um, in Zambia, um, uh, just seeing books that are inappropriate or old and unusable. Uh, I still remember from when I was young going to the the one of the few public libraries in, 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 in Zambia, in my town of Kitwe, and opening books with a big stamp in there saying obsolete. <laughs> I actually didn't know at the time what the word meant. I had to look it up. And and you see lots of this happening. Um, and Lubuto is different. We're not a book donation program, a book dumping program. Uh, the books are carefully collected. Um, <laughs> I hope book dumping will become obsolete. Thanks, Jay. Uh, we're, we're not about book dumping. We we want to give children, African children, I believe, deserve good books, deserve high quality books. Uh, they have the right to to high quality books, just just like any other children. And and this has, I think, this has hurt the profession in in. In Zambia, um, there are ways that uh, book donation can be can be done intelligently. The shining example is is Lubuto. but uh, librarians in where in places without programs like Lubuto or at different levels, college or whatever, can 
can be in close up touch with with librarians in in the West who want to help uh, with book donations. They can have a more intelligent way of of, of requesting books and choosing books. Um, so this is a this is a, a fight Lubuto is up against. Uh, lots and lots of programs that are dumping books. Um, Secondly, uh, information literacy skills. Now, what can youth librarians do in, 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 in Zambia and similar societies? I think information literacy and, and more broadly speaking, um, media literacy can counter the digital divide. Um, our libraries uh, are places where children um, can come to gain these skills uh, through the use of literacy lessons, um, electronic literacy lessons, or uh, just coming to play on the computers, um, create music, um, type their stories. Um, so we're living in a world where the internet is becoming more and more widely available. I mean, even in Zambia, people have cheap phones that can go on the internet, but librarians have the skills to help uh, young people uh, navigate the internet, to help them evaluate what's out there, what can help them in their lives. Uh, they want information on, on diseases like HIV AIDS, they want information on, on careers, they want information on on democracy and what's happening uh, in the world. So librarians in Zambia, it is a challenge to them to, to really step in and provide these skills, instruction in these skills. Um, a third opportunity um, <laughs> Uh, is uh, early literacy skills. Um, and in the bottom left picture there, that's actually in um, before the Mumuni Library was completed, uh, one of the um, teachers from close by um, singing traditional songs with the children there in Nabukuyu village. Early literacy is, is really important. Um, Libraries are about many things, but we have the opportunity, we have the resources to help children develop emergent literacy skills. Uh, currently, uh, in Zambia, uh, literacy rates are, are pretty, pretty low, and this is because people have not had the chance to to read to begin life with print. Um, there was an experiment done, a book flood program done in in Malawi where uh, a box of books was placed in sixth grade classrooms and children were expected to become better readers after that. But how do children become better readers if they don't have the foundational skills? It's, it's really a waste. So I think Libraries, um, children's librarians uh, working in Zambia and similar societies have, this is a great opportunity for them to, one of the many skills that they can contribute to the development of, of society. Uh, those are just some of the, the opportunities that I've began seeing from my studies at Gisless and from reading the literature um, that in the profession of uh, youth um, services librarianship that we're trying to promote as Lubuto in Zambia can contribute to. And I think uh, librarians in Zambia, it's, it's a challenge for them. It's a challenge for all of us uh, who think about working in, in similar societies can can rise up to. Um, and with that, I'll ask for any questions. Um, thank you very much for listening. Great. Thank you, Thomas. Wonderful presentation. Are there any questions or comments from 
our participants. Thomas, thank you for uh, an amazing tour uh, and, and such, a, such an eloquent way of presenting everything. The, the, uh, the story about discovering the word obsolete stamped into a book that you were reading will stay with me. But the question I wanted to pose uh, as we conclude today is, um, as you are proceeding through your own program at the University of Illinois, I wonder if you have any speculation about the kinds of larger transferable professional skills that you see that could cross international lines as easily as you are doing. Okay. Um, thanks for that question. Well, I think some of the skills I, uh, that um, librarianship can offer anywhere um, include some of the things I just talked about, the opportunities that we we see in, in Zambia for youth services librarians. Uh, this, these include collection development, uh, the idea that a collection needs to be kept fresh and also, looking at collection development in a in a broader way, look um, looking outside the box, outside traditional uh, review reference sources. Um, uh, the way we do it in Zambia, at times we have to go out and seek out publishers. Who recently we have done a lot of work with the Zambia Education and Publishing House, um, which in the past published um, stories um, in local languages that Lubuto preserved digitally, but have begun republishing some of those stories. And uh, you can find those in, in, in book lists, for example. So collection development, the skills that are traditional, but looking at it in, in a broader sense. and. Information literacy skills too, um, um, traditional programming for children. But there are some other skills that I think, and this may be because I'm fresh out of uh, information organization and access. Um, the idea of uh, ease of access, access points um, for information for young people. Uh, uh, Anthony and I, Professor Bernier and I, have been talking a lot about this, how um, we can merchandise books um, for people to easily access, um, uh, book displays, uh, um, programming, programming different ways that we can engage young people. Um, in in the library, I think there there are lots of skills that can cut across cultures and and uh, and and different skills that can cut across cultures. Uh, one of the other things that I um, I see um, and thanks for the question, Jane. Uh, service. Um, I, I, I have an, an assistantship as well in one of the libraries at at um, at the University of Illinois, and I I I think I'll learn much. I'm learning a lot from that as well. But I will also do a practicum in in a public library, a youth services. One of the things that I've seen from the literature, but also from working alongside American librarians, um, professionals, is uh, this view uh, that um, yes, indeed, librarianship is a service profession. Um, we are there to serve people. We are there. Um, the analogy is that that one of my supervisors at work gives is that um, when you're sick, you go to the hospital to get um, uh, treated for for whatever ailment you have. You meet nurses, doctors, nurse practitioners. When you need information, you go to the librarian. So we are the nurses or doctors of, of information. We are there to serve people. And I've seen that really, really big in, in, in 
in the U.S. in U.S. libraries uh, that professional ethos that this is a service profession, um, and I think that that can that that's a global thing. Um, wherever you are in the world, it, it can be it can be um, it's something a unique aspect of our profession. I hope that answers. I, 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 Dr. Bernier, I think uh, the more I go through my studies, I'll have a better answer for you. But I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it looks like it does. <clears throat> Great. Any other questions? And I don't want to put her on the spot, but we, we do have Jane Myers with us, and Jane is the founder of Lubuto. Uh, Jane did actually do a very nice presentation on Lubuto uh, for us, a colloquium for us a couple of years ago uh, when they were, I think, had just had just, I think the second library was underway or, or something along those lines, and it was it was a great presentation and introduced Lubuto to us, and uh, it's great that um, we were able to get an update on what's going on uh, with uh, Thomas. So I, I see we've got, um, one person, there we are. Ah, okay. Um, any other questions or comments? Otherwise, let me let me first of all thank my colleague Anthony Bernier, uh, who put Thomas on my radar, and uh, then I was able to extend the invitation for him to do this colloquium session for us. So thank you, Anthony, for that and. Uh, my thanks to Thomas for uh, just a wonderful presentation and uh, very enlightening and informative and we've we've learned uh, even more about the Lubuto Library Partners and the phenomenal work that they're doing over there. And uh, finally, let me thank everybody for uh, participating today. Uh, we kind of got started with our, our colloquium series this semester a little early because Thomas was uh, on the West Coast and we took advantage of his being here to have him do this presentation. So again, uh, thank everybody for being here and I hope uh, 2015 is off to a good start for all of you and remains that way uh, until the end of uh, the year. Thank you.